Why is Le Mans Classic a special event? Firstly, because it's a rare event that takes place every two years. It brings together the best of the classic endurance cars. Because pre-war cars are alongside prototypes of the 70s. Because that's the only time other than the modern 24-hour race that cars run on the 13km circuit. And finally, because it's a popular event, which this year brings together 123,000 people during the second weekend of July. Il y a aujourd'hui sur les courses modernes des contraintes de sécurité qui sont euh, difficilement contournables et qui évidemment euh, peuvent être considérées. Today in modern racing, there are difficult security constraints that have to be considered for the public. It makes it difficult for the public to approach the cars or enter the pits. Here, it's the opposite. The cars come out of the box. They're under tents, each category in their own paddock, and for the public, it's easy to approach and talk with the owners, who are happy to share and explain their car in every detail. The entire event is created like that. Le Mans Classic is a great festival of endurance with hundreds of stories. Personal stories, big stories of brands, stories of men, women, childhood memories, machines. Almost as many stories as there are teams here. We will tell you some of those stories. What all of these stories have in common is their authenticity. And to respect these historical truths, the scrutineers keep a close eye on things. Ce sont des véhicules qui ont couru déjà au Mans. There are cars that raced in Le Mans in a very precise definition. This definition is included in a technical document, like a passport of the car and that is validated by the FIA. We can rely on this document to ensure the car before us corresponds well with the history it presents. Our goal is not to falsify history. Unlike the modern racing that changes year on year, if it's in history, it's frozen. What is surprising the first time you go to the Le Mans Classic is the atmosphere within the circuit and around it. It's like we return to the past. The many events and exhibitions open to the public reflect the different eras of the greatest endurance race in the world. The organizers care for every detail, like the VW Combi which acts as a shuttle for the drivers, and the fleet of two CV cars used for VIPs. Even the police are authentic of the era. The history of the 24 Hours of Le Mans is of incomparable richness at each edition, and the organizers don't have too much trouble finding the 24 cars that take part in the Le Mans Heritage Club competition. The principle is simple. 24 original cars that participated in 24 Hours are exposed to the public, and a panel of experts who at the end of the weekend announce the winning car based on specific criteria. Authenticity is what strikes us first. Of course, the cars have been restored, but they have been restored in the spirit of their era, which affects us particularly. This is where the experts of the FIA are being especially vigilant. We hope to keep the soul of the car, a car that made Le Mans has lived and is still susceptible to this experience. All the cars of the Le Mans Heritage Club are roadworthy and make a parade lap before the start of the race.
The great strength of Peter Auto teams is shown every year in an area fixed by history. Proof again is in the arrival of Group C at this year's Le Mans Classic. These iconic cars date from 1982 to 1992. For Group C, it's a crazy world. Imagine, more than 50 cars on the Le Mans track. It's unheard of. And when the recent winner of the 24 hours is driving a Porsche 962, it's even more magical. She was running at the time for Team Tyson, a Japanese team. It's been completely redone and made the first laps yesterday. There are a few worries because it's young, even though it's more than 30 years old. In any case, it's mainly there for fun, and when you drive a 962, it doesn't let you down. There were several Porsche 962 at the start, and they were certainly among the most beautiful of their class. However, Romain Dumas has no luck in the race cannot complete a single lap. Another former Le Mans winner also started. In 1992, Ralph Kellner raced a Porsche in GT2. He had also competed in prototypes on the Saab track. Well, I, I do remember everything out there. Last time I was here in 2008, um, so I, I do remember where to go. But I must say, you know, going through the Porsche curves with such a downforce car, it, um, you, you take some time to wake up again and get used to it. So um, I'm, um, I'm looking forward to the race and there's still lots to learn within those um, 20 minutes that I have. The start of the Group C race on Saturday late morning will remain for sure one of the highlights of this year's Le Mans Classic. Never have so many Group C cars rolled together on the circuit. And at the start, the Peugeot 905 Sauber Mercedes, just to even move these cars on the same track was worth it. The drivers were there to win the first edition, and in theory, it should not escape the great Japanese driver Katsu Kubota. Just before the chequered flag, the mechanics of his Nissan R90 CK broke to everybody's surprise. It's a modest Spice SE89C, perfectly driven by Julien Piguet, who won ahead of the sister car of Belgian Eric de Donka. Le Mans Classic always make a step between the eras. It's not complex. The fastest car of the week to the slow, indestructible truck. There is a place for everything. They've been on track since competition existed. The Cobra is a bit behind the Ferrari. It's been around for more than 25 years. It all began with Lance Reventlow, who created the Scarab team. He then moved to Carroll Shelby, and then to David Piper, and then finished at Anthony Bancroft in the 70s. It dates back to 1957. There are 11 in total now, and I realise a childhood dream, because like many, I played with this as miniatures when I was small. 
And what is absolutely brilliant in history is that the trucks took to the track to give the audience a thrill. Some privileged people have had the pleasure to ride in the old bus for a lap, making unforgettable memories. And what about the drivers from the Little Big Mom? For much of the day on Friday, a small group of kids were lucky enough to pilot miniature cars and carry out a start just like the Le Mans race under the watch of Pharrell Williams. Mini prototypes, mini GTs, mini, just like the children. Some who now have only one dream in mind, to return as a driver at Le Mans when they grow up. Time now to the first race of Category 1. During the 24 hours, the Categories 1 to 6 will take it in turns on track and each roll three times for 45 minutes. The first category to start the 24 hours includes the pre-war cars from 1923 to 1939 and in keeping with the era, it's an era of corn start. On the starting grid, while the cars take their place, there are, as always, many personalities. And this year, the starter was none other than pop star Pharrell Williams. I mean, I'm, I'm still like watching it, but you know, it's just awesome to see all the ingenuity, all the art forms driving by, you know, it's art form of machinery. Uh, is, it, is it something you enjoy? Is it you know, all the time? Well, as I said, this is, a, this is a brand new experience. It's new, so. Everything is ready for the fun to begin, and the drivers are ready to pounce. I think the plateau 1 is the most moving. Category 1 is the most moving of the Le Mans Classic. This is where it all began. And to be there now, it's very intense for me. Whatever the car, regardless of the position on the grid, we relive it, and I assure you that it's really intense. Jean-Marc Bussolini will never forget his start under the applause of 50,000 people and driving his splendid Peugeot 402 Dalmat. Quickly, Christian Treber moved his Talbot Largo Monoplace ahead of the pack. If the Franco-Venetian brand has never had fame at Le Mans, it is the star of Le Mans Classic, and Treber is untouchable.
and we must have a strong heart traveling at close to 170 kilometers per hour in the Unodier Strait behind the wheel of those old cars is testament to the relative safety. Driving alone in his Delage is Paul Emil Bessard, who does not lose any pleasure in taking some risks. It's open top and without seat belts. We find that feeling of freedom while sitting very low to the ground. And then there's the way I can make it slide, the way she accelerates, the smell. Everything is different, everything is special. Admiring the battles up front, we see that ultimately many brands still exist. Certainly, Alvis, Lagonda or Talbot disappeared. But Bentley still exists and family relation is still present. At the time, they were large and impressive cars and very powerful, which is still the case today. And what about BMW, which celebrates its centenary this year? A historical brand that has always been forward-thinking, like the Model 328 from 1937. A car whose technical and aerodynamic specification are close to the XK120 Jaguars, which appeared after the war. Exactly. So, body-wise and engine-wise, it was ahead of its time. So, technically, that, uh, for instance, if you look, for instance, what, what, okay, 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 get up my casket, okay. So if you, for instance, look at the Jaguar XK120, it's very much the body, the XK120. So again, ahead of his time and love and fun to drive. The 328 of Bali and Le Sieur finished third in class, one place behind the Talbot 105 of Bronson and Burnett. And as in 2014, Ternary Trober won the pre-war class. There are three races in life that you would like to win. Le Mans, Daytona and Monaco. And I've won all three. I'm happy. There are a few moments we were talking about the unique Delage racing. Not far from the track, there was another. A single exceptional model, the Delage D6 Grand Prix dressed in its original bodywork. It was for sale at the auction organized by Arte Curiel and adjudged by Maître Hervé Poulain. At the high-end range, a Ferrari 250 Berlinetta short wheelbase, rare on the market, or a Porsche 935, driven at the time by Hervé Poulain in person, and that could well return in two years to make the start at the Le Mans Classic. The Art Curiel auction gathered 115 items from the original poster of the 24 hours in 1923, including an Auto Bianchi Abarth, Citroen Traction and Ferrari F40. From 1949 to 1956 is the period covered by the Class 2 cars. This is the period in which a clash of machinery, regarded today as true works of art, which at the time were simple race cars, were driven to Le Mans by road most of the time. The Class 2 also made the traditional Le Mans start. The family jewel of this series are the Maserati 300s who are present, but never on the top step of the podium. The Ferraris. 
the Aston Martins. And of course, the Jaguar C-Type and D-Type are the cars to beat in this period of history. But during this period, there is a brand that has won everything in the standings in the Performance Index. This brand is DB Panard. 10 wins on record between 1950 and 1962. The Panard is like no other. Against the powerful V8 or V12 competition, the French were led by small twins such as the 2CV. Then you had to make up the aerodynamic weight and steering. Of course, it's a little engine and there was no question of winning Le Mans overall. But we were in the period after the war when they were looking for economical solutions. So these cars have achieved a great fate because for cars to roll for 24 hours at 130 to 140 kilometers per hour, it really is something. They're made to do a lot less now and already struggling. With the characteristic sound of machine guns, the DB Ponard animated again in Class 2. Do you know the Jowett brand? No? Well, it's an English brand in existence from 1904 to 1954. The last model was the Jupiter, engineered by von Eberhorst, who was transferred from Auto Union. The Jupiter won Le Mans in its class, despite its small 1500cc engine. There was a Le Mans classic, and to revive this brand, it takes more than passion. Because the company has gone out of business, the cars haven't been developed. I mean, you, you look around at the Jaguars and the Austin Healys, everybody's been working on those developing, they can buy new parts and all that sort of thing. So we decided it'd be nice to get Jarrett back uh, into Le Mans, into uh, club racing and all those kind of things. But we've had to do a huge amount of development on the engine and on the chassis and other things to get it going. So, you know, we've, we've had made new, new pistons, new camshafts, new conrods. Almost everything has been made and developed you know, to a more, slightly more modern standard. Returning to the race in Class 2, on the third step of the podium, the Lotus 11 of Krignoff Seiss. Just behind, the Maserati 300S of Chambon. And for victory, history stutters, as it's once again a Jaguar Type D, driven by Andy Wallace, who won at Le Mans in 1988 in a Jaguar, of course. Wallace is also part of the family of Coventry, and it's him who is entrusted with the keys of the Type D number six, winning in 1955 and who participated early in a race only reserved for cars signified by the famous feline. Wallace is also full of praise about the beautiful subject. I tell you, that's a fantastic car to drive. It's incredibly quick in a straight line. It moves around a lot compared with what I was used to in the past, of course, but uh, no, fantastic. A real pleasure also to be back in Lamar. Um, what a wonderful facility this is. Stroll, watch, discuss, discover, travel. There are many activities at Lamar Classic, and the Bugatti circuit is driven by the clubs. More than 15,000 cars enter the enclosure of the track for an incredible exhibition. Of course, there are the best Ferraris, Porsche, Ford and others. And then there are the lesser known, like the Hotchkiss Club, a French brand that disappeared. Coming with this club at Le Mans Classic is a whole philosophy. We see the car and try to offer a varied and interesting category. And then, we, as any other visitor of the Le Mans Classic does, walk, discover the paddock, and during the night, we follow the race and share in the 24-hour spirit. Focus attention for a moment on the Alpha Classic Club and its president, who would miss that for nothing in the world, the biannual Saad event. He's made sure all is done with perfection. 
bâtiment classique est tellement une manifestation prestigieuse qu'on est obligé de enfin, se faire un devoir. C'est un réel honneur de présenter les plus beaux cars que nous avons au club, les plus rares, les plus exclusifs, comme ce qu'il y a derrière moi. C'est une Romeo Utility et il était disponible avec plusieurs modèles, glace ou hardtop. Il y a eu tellement, il y a eu beaucoup, beaucoup de versions. Et alors aujourd'hui, le paradoxe est que, à l'époque, c'était une utilité. Et aujourd'hui, ils ne sont pas trouvés. Ils ont tous été détruits et détruits. Bien sûr, usés et jetés. It's even more rare because it's one of the only vehicles in the world with a dual motorhead camshaft made of aluminium, like the Giulietta of the time. Double aluminium in the head, all aluminium, like the models of the time, that is the Giulietta, which was the best seller of the 1950s of the brand. The public stroll between the cars and admire them, discover and rediscover. We see again what we saw when we were young children. Everything is made for the public. We can approach the cars easily. It's an amazing event. All the categories are wonderful. We come from Le Mans and it's an unmissable event. It's great, plus the weather is wonderful. We're so lucky. It's extraordinary and the children love it so much. I'm passionate and she was nice to offer me the ticket to come here. For his birthday, it's his dream to come to Le Mans Classic. He's dreamt since he was young and I said, OK, I'll offer him that. And it's really great. It's full of happiness, plus the weather is wonderful. Everything is OK. <laughs> meeting on the pre-grid for Class 3 for a funny story. And again, a meeting between passionate enthusiasts through the ages. This Morgan and the Deep Sanderson were driven by the same man, Chris Lawrence, and its history is somewhat unusual. Yes, they have a, a, a very deep link because Chris Lawrence started racing Morgans and uh, he raced Morgans at Le Mans. Uh, this actual car was raced by Chris Lawrence and Richard Shepherd Barron, who he, they shared the car at Le Mans in 1962, but he then went on to race the Deep Sanderson that you have just been looking at here. So they are both Lawrence Tune cars and they both have a unique history. Lawrence won his class in 1962 with the Morgan. And then he decided to make his own car and the Deep Sanderson was born. He built uh, 17 of these. Uh, only one in uh, aluminium, the rest in fiberglass, and this is the one that, that raced. And uh, the person I bought it from uh, went to Chris, Chris Lawrence before he died in 2012, and Chris Lawrence rebuilt this car. The Class 3 cars raced at Le Mans between 1957 and 1967. Of course, at the time, the start was made in the era of corn formation. Under the experienced eye of Richard Mill, collector, connoisseur, partner and driver, they've done it again this year. Le Mans Classic is a love story. It's summer, it's beautiful weather, there's a great atmosphere. It's like the Tour de France. Everyone is in good spirits. There are parties and beyond the cars, visible everywhere. There's an atmosphere like no other. Il y a une ambiance qui est, qui est vraiment en Hulot pareil. C'est très bon enfant. This period is dominated by Ferrari, who had a lot of a success. At Le Mans Classic, the brand is represented by the beautiful 250 Berlinetta short wheelbase and the unique bread van, if we can call it a Ferrari. The Aston Martin DB4 is also racing and evokes the unique victory of the brand overall. It was in 1959 the DBR1 Shelby and Salvadori was needed. During the 8th edition of the Le Mans Classic, Belgian Christian Dumoulin, who is well accustomed to the podium in historic races, puts his Ferrari in third place. Peru and Chemino finish in second place aboard their Austin Healy.
and the victory goes to Chris Ward on board an impressive Lista Costa. The evening at Le Mans Classic is a magical time, especially when, like this year, the weather is glorious. And there is one place not to miss under any circumstances, the Camping du U. This is where the drivers and teams are found between races to relax with a pleasant ambiance, a barbecue and some time to work on the cars. It's restful in the Camping du U, while in the village, dancing and partying. The night will be short, so it's better to enjoy it. Some exceptional moments, a drive-in cinema in the middle of the track. At night, the atmosphere on the starting pre-grid is always good. For amateur drivers, driving at night often brings additional stress while the pros show admiration for their elders, who at the time were rolling almost by candlelight. Well, uh, that you going into that, what, what the drivers uh, felt in this time, so that you think Really, that were really men's with, uh, like we say, with balls <laughs> to drive this uh, car with high speed uh, on a track like this. Each of the six classes at Le Mans Classic participate in a night session, and the public do not desert the stands. Class 4, representing the period 1962 to 1965, confirms the domination of Ferrari. But emblematic is the duel between the Italian brand and the great manufacturer, Ford. The last start, like Le Mans race, for a race that brings together cars of the golden age of the automobile. As long as one is interested in motorsport, then you will know the history of the Ferrari Ford duel. Ford upset at Ferrari's refusal to decide to fight the Scuderia at Le Mans. 
to counter the Ferrari 330, 275, 250 and especially the fabulous 250 LM first Ferrari GT rear engine, Ford will develop the GT40 and the original GT40 chassis that was designed by Lola. And here is the ancestor of the GT40. Ford, I think, built a complete complete car in the United States. They have the pilots de pointe de l'époque. Ford built a complete car in the States. They did it to please the drivers, who say that in their point of view, the engine and gearbox were perfect. But the chassis was no good. Ford realized they didn't have the capacity to build themselves a good chassis. And so turned to English craftsmen, Lotus, Cooper and Lola. And Lola already had the plans to build the MK6. But they had cash flow problems. So Eric Broadley, the boss, sold the concept of the MK6 to Henry Ford. Le Mans Classic race this year in Class 4, and the battle is between the GT40 and Shelby Cobra. The first 10 places are also occupied by these two models. Third place goes to Ludovic Caron, best of the Cobra drivers, who is just behind the GT40 of mine and that of Sean Lynn, winner of the series. In the mid-60s, Alpine ran at Le Mans in search of a victory in the performance index. At the initiative of Jean-Charles Rade, son of the founder of the brand, Alpine prototypes have since been restored in recent years and compete in the historic race. At Le Mans Classic, two of five M63 models were entered, including one driven by Jean-Charles Rade in person. These Alpines ran both in endurance racing, the Mille Miglia, but they have never met the same successes as the Berlinettas in rally. The descendant of the M63 is M65. Of the two copies built on track with Stefan Rickelme driving, he was victorious at Le Mans three weeks ago aboard an Alpine LMP2. For the young driver, the relationship with the former racing car is quite unexpected. My father and I are passionate about slot racing, and here we see all our miniatures in reality. I live in Monaco and I'm used to seeing beautiful cars, but here it's really amazing. On en a vu de plus beau, de plus réussi. Mais attention, au premier plan, une voiture jaune va se faire bousculer à gauche et à droite avant de prendre la bonne vie. Stefan Rickelme has in his collection the three Ford GT40 who were victorious in the historic treble of 1966. The victorious Black Eamon and McLaren No. 5 is the same that won this year's Le Mans Heritage Club, while the gold and pink car competes in this year's Le Mans Classic. Here it is. After 1966, it made a trip to the USA to be exposed at Ford dealerships. Then it went into a museum and was bought by three owners who never raced with this car. I bought this car in 2004 and since I compete in historic races, but mainly the Le Mans Classic. The connection between Class 4 and 5 is made through the Ford GT40. The brand with the blue oval aligns four consecutive wins, but Porsche decided to put all their strength in the fight to get the overall victory. Models 906, 908 and 910 in their various open and closed versions are very close to the goal several times. But it was the 917 Porsche that pocketed the first win in 1970. And 917, dressed in the same bodywork, victorious in 1970, was in the hands of Carlos Monteverde this year. To counter Porsche, Ferrari have never dropped their arms, as Scuderia probably built the most beautiful of all, the 312P. 
David Franklin, the owner, is also custodian of a mission to make the world see the artwork. It's great that owners have these cars and they prepare them and they come to meetings like this so everybody can see them, not only view them but see them on the track and hear them most of all because so many cars in this grid are fantastic. You look at the V12 Matra, the Porsche 917, this, they sound so special, very good. sound that contrasts a curious car with a small four-cylinder engine. The Costa Nathan was created by Jem March, a former engineer of Marcos. The car is innovative with its small engine, but especially by its chassis in wood. This is the ancestor of the carbon shell. It's made with exotic wood that is extremely lightweight, but the torque, it gives a great rigidity to the chassis. It weighs 500 kilograms, which is very light. I hope we never have to test the crash strength. It's not like the carbon. Costa Nathan is one of those countless British manufacturers and among them are two that will mark the 60s and 70s, Chevron and Lola. The philosophy of both brands is to produce cars capable of receiving large V8 engines of all makes. At the time, the Lola T90 and Chevron B ran on all circuits all over the world in the hands of private clients. But at Le Mans, they were never successful. Even worse, they never saw the chequered flag. Ironically, in the current historical racing, Lola T70 are unbeatable and show exceptional reliability. Evidence that at the time these machines were very well built. Le Mans Classic, they have once again dominated their category. Lola and Chevron occupy the first 13 places of the ranking in Class 5. The podium is made up 100% by Lola, with Sila, Dodonka and Tuna, the winner of the 2016 Le Mans Classic. This victory is special. It's been two years and the technical team have done an incredible job to get us here. It was perfect. In the corner of the paddock, we come across a connoisseur of the 24 hours of Le Mans. Fabrice Bourrigo, the communications director of the Automobile Club de l'Ouest, who gives us his thoughts on this year's Le Mans Classic. A car built here at Le Mans, the Inaltera. It dates back to 1976 when it was built by Jean Rondeau. He went after his dream after playing the 24 hours of Le Mans and built his own cars to finally win the overall victory ahead of the giants, Porsche, in 1980. And this adventure began in 1976 with Inalterra, a wallpaper brand who financed Jean Rondeau and who gave the car its name, an effective way to advertise at the time. In the adventure, Rondeau takes Henri Pescarolo, then triple Le Mans winner. It's in Altera's 40th anniversary and the owner had the great idea to reform the Beltoise team with Pescarolo. As 40 years ago, but with Julien Beltoise who drives with me after his father passed away this year. 
de Jean-Pierre Velpoz, Julien Velpoz, qui va conduire avec moi. And the anniversary was celebrated with dignity, with a parade of the three 1976 cars. Beltoise and Pescarolo also participated in races in Class 6 for cars built between 72 and 81. During this decade, the open prototypes are reappearing, with the Matra in good attendance, but also the Renault Alpine. The Renault company redeemed the Alpine brand. The cars are yellow, and thanks to the technology of the turbo, it ran in 1978 with Peroni and Josso. At Le Mans Classic was a Renault Alpine driven by Serpaghi and Ragnotti. This single Renault victory at Le Mans will mark the retirement of the brand in endurance racing in order to turn to F1. It was during this period that we begin to distinguish between prototypes and GT at Le Mans, as is still the case at present. It was also in the 70s show of Group 5. The Porsche 935 was well attended and the Lancia Beta. In Class 6, we looked at the iconic GT, the BMW M1 Pro Car. These M1s participated throughout the season in a single mark called Pro Car. Equal car, it was a total equal car. Everybody had the same, same car. It's like a, a GT3 Porsche Cup now. Yeah. But uh, the good thing was that the Formula One drivers drove uh, basically the first three cars always. And so I imagine that every, every time a collectioner chooses a car, it's for a good reason. Yes. What was your reason for this one? Because it's the only Regazzoni original car which is left. Hence the Regazzoni windshield panel. M1 were extremely efficient and reliable and therefore participated in the 24 hours of Le Mans several times. Class 6 at Le Mans this year was dominated by Porsche. History repeats itself. Myers and Siebenthal put their 935 Group 5 in second place behind the queen of that time, the magnificent Porsche 36, three times victorious in the Saab. Driving the number 78, Schumacher and Werner, who somehow pocketed a fourth victory at Le Mans. Still Le Mans, but I miss all the fans, just my guys there from the team, but still a nice feeling to come back here on this podium. And yeah, of course, on the track I did my job and it was a nice feeling, but it was very, very tough. I felt that this uh, 45 minutes were much tougher than four and a half uh, hours in an Audi in the modern cars. This year, Le Mans Classic attracted a record audience, more than 123,000 spectators who attended intense and varied races, but also lived in a festival atmosphere like no other, a true celebration of motorsport and endurance. All drivers without exception left with a smile, and for some, this weekend at Le Mans was enchanting. We are especially happy to be here driving beautiful cars with an incredible audience and we're very happy to drive on the big Le Mans circuit, a chance that not everyone gets. And to drive with my older brother adds a special flavour, though he's faster than me and that is annoying. And what's the feeling of Francois Fillon's brother about this 8th edition of Le Mans Classic? 
I share the car with my brother every two years. We're both passionate, and I admit it's pretty special. We share cars now, but was that the same when we were small? I have a picture of me at four months in a cradle, and he's offering me a car. This is the driver's club that ended the Le Mans Classic in 2016 with the award and the Richard Mill limited edition watch for the winners of various categories. We tried to contribute more this year with extra categories such as Group C and Jaguar. We try to make the weekend as full as possible and the spectators love that, which in turn makes us happy. But the Le Mans Classic means each time winning teams. Teams that share the same race number in each of the categories. In 2016, the teams that will win no matter their placement in the race are the teams that wear the number two. In category one, it's the Talbot Largo of Traber and Trenery. In two, a Fiat 8 Visa Gato, led by Koenig, Trenery and Traber. In Class 3, the Ferrari 250 GT Berlinetta of Joy and Simon. In Class 4, it's the Shelby Mustang of Studer. In 5, the Porsche 917 of Vogel. And finally, the top M1 Pro Car BMW in Class 6 of Peter and Traber. Now, drivers, spectators and organizers have two years to rest. In 2018, we will celebrate the 10th edition of Le Mans Classic.